Hello, this is Rowdy Chemist Jr. bringing you another exciting uh, video for Gen Chem 1 Labs. And in this video, we're going to talk about assembling the fuel cell component for the Gas Laws Lab. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So the first thing we're going to talk about are the fuel cell components. And so the first two components we have are the heat lamp, which is shown right here. And this is used to give the light that is going to be absorbed by the solar panel to produce electricity. And bear in mind that this heat lamp gets very hot. And over here we have our solar panel that we use to generate electricity to run our fuel cell. The next component in this fuel cell uh, apparatus is the fuel cell itself, which is this blue box here. This contains the components of the fuel cell that allows for the electrolysis of water. And the wiring is color coded for the hydrogen side, which is black, and the oxygen side, which is red. So when you're connecting the wiring, you connect the black to the hydrogen side, the red to the oxygen side. Next we have the two plastic beakers which will be used to collect the hydrogen and oxygen gas. Again these will be color coded. Hydrogen uh, beaker will be labeled in black. Oxygen beaker will be labeled in uh, red. In addition to that we have the plastic what I call the plastic tops for the beakers and we'll talk more about these in just a moment but this is important when we're fitting them in to have it fit in a particular position. Uh, we have water that we're going to add to the beakers and we have a syringe for adding water to the fuel cell. The last component of the fuel cell is the fan and the fan is used to see how long we can run the fan based on the amount of hydrogen and oxygen gas that we collected. So we're going to use those gases to produce electricity to run the fan and see how long the fan can run for. So these are all the different components of the fuel cell apparatus. So before we move on to the fuel cell assembly, just a few things to keep in mind. The components include the heat lamp, the solar panel. Remember the heat lamp gets very hot. Uh, the fuel cell with the wiring and hose. The plastic beakers with the tops, water, and a fan. So again, number three should be uh, fuel cell. with the wiring and hose. Fuel cell was that blue box that we showed you in the video. Sorry about that, a little bit of a typo, but number three should be the uh, fuel cell. So now we're going to show you how to assemble the fuel cell. So step one is we're going to check to make sure the solar panel is working by using the fan. So a reminder when you're connecting things, red connects the red, black connects the black. And when you're using the solar panel, make sure it doesn't get too close to the lamp. Because if it gets too close, it'll melt. Like that song, it says, Mama not told me not to look into the eyes of the sun, but mama, that's where the fun is. Oop, just a little side note. Let's watch how we should do this. So again, red connects to the red. So she's connecting the fan to use it in the with the solar panel. She connects it to the red slot on the solar panel. Black connects to the black. I 
when she the solar panel is placed under the lamp, she's going to turn on the lamp. Reminder that the lamp does get hot. Again, the lamp does get hot. So place the solar panel under the lamp. You might need to give the fan a little push to get it started and now we confirm that the solar panel is working. Alright, step two is to make sure the fuel cell has water in it. Uh, no water equals no electrolysis which equals no gases. This is a very common issue that is encountered when doing this experiment is that we forget to make sure the fuel cell has water in it. And it's a note to make sure that we add water to the hydrogen side of the fuel cell which is the uh, side of the fuel cell that's labeled in black. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use this tubing here, remove the black uh, top, add water into that tube. We're going to add enough water to where we see water coming out uh, on the other side through the tube with the red ca cap. So once you see water uh, collect on the tube on the oxygen side, you know you've added enough water to the fuel cell. So what we're going to do is we're going to suck up some water in the syringe, add it to the hydrogen sides, this tube with the black cap, add it into there. It'll fill up the fuel cell. When we start seeing the water on the on the tube, or excuse me, in the tube, on the oxygen side, we've added enough uh, water. So she's got the water. We remove the cap on the hydrogen sides of the tube. We add the syringe to the tube and we add enough water to it to where we start seeing water into the tube on the oxygen side. We replace the black cap onto the tube and now we have filled the fuel cell with water. Remember that the water goes in on the hydrogen side of the fuel cell. Uh, step three is we're connecting the wiring to the fuel cell. Again, this is color coded. The black wire connects to the hydrogen side. The red wire connects to the oxygen side. Very important that you connect the correct wires to the correct sides. So step four is very important. In step four, we're going to add the water uh, to the beakers and then insert the plastic tops into the beakers. But what we need to make, sh what we need to remember is that on the beakers, we have these little plastic walls, like semicircles, at the bottom of the beakers, and in the on the tops, we have these little notches. So there's a notch there, and there's a notch there. And then on the beaker, which is hard to see right now, but I'll highlight it with the purple, we have these little plastic kind of like semicircle walls at the bottom of the beaker in the inside of the beaker. And so what you want to make sure to notice is that when you insert the plastic top into the beaker, the notch here is somewhere in this opening here so that the when the gas is produced and starts collecting in the top the water can displace out of the top so let's watch them see how to add the to place the top into the beaker 
Again, the notches should be on the openings at the bottom of the beaker. So it's kind of hard to see here, but again, here's the notch. And then here to the left is the little semicircle uh, plastic wall in the beaker and on the right as well. So again, you want to make sure that the notches are in the opening so that it allows the water to come out as the gas enters from the top. So it's very important that you do this so that the water can displace. What we see here is that she, the top has been moved to show you that the notches are in the incorrect position because they cover, they're covered by the little plastic wall at the bottom of the beaker. So here's the plastic wall. And here's the notch. The same for the other side, the notch is blocked by the plastic wall or what I call side and this is incorrect so this is the incorrect way of aligning because now the water that's inside the top can't be displaced when the gas is entering from the top so this is the correct way that the top should be inserted into the beaker Keeping in mind that now you can see the notches are aligned at the openings at the bottom of the beaker and the little plastic walls do not interfere with the notches. This is a common issue that we have is that we forget to align the uh, top correctly so that the water can displace out of the notch. So the gas comes in from the top the water displaces from the bottom resulting in the water level to rise outside the beaker. So this is the correct way to align the top inside the beaker. So now we're ready to add water to the beakers and we're going to add enough water to reach the zero mark on the beakers uh, graduations. One thing to note is that the graduations on the beakers are in two milliliter graduations. So the tick marks equal two milliliters. So every tick mark that's on the beaker represents a two milliliters of liquid. So we're gonna add the water to the zero mark for each beaker. So once it's added to the zero mark, we're going to place the plastic top into the uh, beaker, making sure that the notches are not blocked by the plastic sides at the bottom, just as we see here. And then we're going to take the syringe and remove a little bit of the water to make sure that the level of water outside, or excuse me, the level of water in the beaker starts at the zero milliliter mark. So whatever water, whenever the water level rises, we know that's how much water was displaced, which equals the amount of gas, that volume of gas that was produced. We do the same thing with the oxygen. We're going to first fill it to the zero milliliter mark on the beaker. Again, keep in mind that each tick mark on the beaker is two milliliters. Once we fill it to the zero milliliter mark, we're gonna add the plastic top, keeping in mind that the notches are aligned such that the uh, plastic sides do not block the opening of the notch. So here's our notch. 
me get a better color. Here's our notch, and here's the plastic side. So you can see that the notch is not, the opening of the notch is not being blocked by the plastic side. This will allow the water to displace out. Then we add the plastic top. We're going to remove some of the water in the beaker to get it back to the zero milliliter mark. And now we're ready to add the tubing. So step five, or the last step, we're going to connect the plastic tubing from the fuel cell to each plastic beaker. Remember that the hydrogen side of the fuel cell connects to the hydrogen or the beaker labeled H2, and the oxygen side of the fuel cell connects to the beaker labeled O2. So here we take the uh, black side, which is the hydrogen side H2, we take the hose the longer hose on the H2 side is connected to the H beaker labeled H2. And the longer hose on the oxygen side, we take that hose and connect it to the top in the beaker labeled O2. And you want to make sure the beakers are arranged so that you can clearly see the tick marks on the beaker. So now the Now the last step is to connect the wires to the solar panel. Again, this is color coded, so the red wire goes in the red slot, the black wire goes into the black slot, and now you have a fully assembled solar panel setup. So here's our uh, fuel cell, solar panel, the beakers with the tops to collect the uh, gas produced, or the gases produced, and the heat lamp. So now you have a fully assembled uh, fuel cell. So I hope this video was informative uh, and you were able to gain something out of watching this video, at least how to assemble the fuel cell that we'll be using in the lab involving gas loss. So until next time, Rowdy Chemist Jr. signing off.